I'd say probably about half the people in this room have probably had some issues with their rotator cuff at some point as well. When we look at uh, uh, the actual process of, <laughs> of an injury to the rotator cuff, it's this progressive pathology over time. Okay? You don't just injure your rotator cuff one day usually. It's this progressive degeneration. So you may irritate it. Maybe you move to a new house and you have to paint the whole inside of your house. You spend the day painting the ceiling, painting the walls. The next day you can't lift your arm. You irritated your shoulder, basically. You continue to irritate it and you don't take that stimulus away that leads to inflammation. Inflammation will lead to some partial tearing, some fraying over time. And then finally, eventually, if we don't take away that stimulus, it leads to a tear. So for us, what do we do is we want to identify where in the process each person is. Okay? That's kind of the, 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 the main focus for rotator cuff patients is to see where they're at. Because different parts of the process are going to re require different types of treatment and different types of programs, right? So the first thing I look at is just real simple, just assessing active motion, just having the patient raise their arm up overhead. Okay? I think Eric actually showed an excellent video, and we can actually, let's, let's all practice that right here. I want everybody here to just kind of slouch. Most of you already are. Everybody sat up real quick, but slouch. And now raise your arms up. How high up do you go? Pretty limited, right? You feel like a little pinch, right? Or a big pinch, or whatever it may be. Now everybody sit, sit up straight, sit up tall, get your scapular back, and lift your arms up overhead. All the way overhead, right? No pain, no pinch. Anybody have a pinch? With that, good. I was going to say, you should go train with Eric for a while. He'll help you with that. But. So the first thing we look at is their, their active motion. And it's not just looking at how much they can lift, but how does their whole body function together? Just like what Eric was talking about during last talk. Right? Does that make sense? So it's not just how high they can lift, but how is their entire spine functioning while they lift? How does their scapular work with the glenohumeral joint to lift their arm? That makes sense? So putting it all together. A couple of quick things to look for is these two red zones. Somebody has a pinch at top, it's either a subacromial impingement or an AC joint type pain. Those are pretty easy to identify because it's location. If it's your AC joint, it hurts on your AC joint, right? It's pretty easy. Most commonly though, and this is funny, this is what you see in a textbook, they just put AC pain, you have impingement at the top. So that's when you have that cuff irritation. So I can raise my arm up all the way, no problem. At the very top I get a pinch. That's somebody that has that early, early stage kind of irritation of their rotator cuff. It's not as big of a problem. Somebody that has this dysfunctional arc, though, have you seen the arc before? Where they raise their arm like, ooh, it hurts a little bit there, and then when I get up there, it actually feels a little bit better. I can raise my arm up. That's that dysfunctional arch. That's different. That's somebody that now has a cuff that's not working. Okay, and we'll talk about that a little bit and what that means. But if you see somebody with that arc and then it gets better at the top, that's a little bit more important to identify. That's somebody that you have to really change their program significantly because they probably have a, a, a pretty good um, injury to their rotator cuff. 